For three centuries, wooden and iron ships have grounded and broken apart on this reef. One of them was the first propeller-driven steamship to sail these waters. It was called the Alicante. Is this that ship? Is this the Alicante? Or is it any one of a dozen others buried by the coral on the Margarita Reef? Portholes in this hull section had been removed by a torch. There was some talk among the La Paquera fishermen that a Japanese salvage ship had scavenged iron off the wreck. The missing portholes suggest these rumors may be true. The debris field for this wreck is spread over an area of 300 meters. That suggests a huge ship, one much larger than the Alicante had been. There is some evidence of a large ship wrecking on the Margarita Reef during the Spanish-American War. It was a freighter converted into a hospital ship. Could this wreck be that ship and not the Alicante? The size of the debris field points in that direction. However, it is possible that a strong sea had spread the wreckage and lengthened the debris field giving the wreck the appearance of having been a much larger ship. Or perhaps salvers removed the portholes, disturbed the wreck site, and scattered the wreckage. This hull section suggests that the debris field has indeed been extended either by salvers or by the sea. The size and spacing of these iron ribs tell of a ship which could not have been more than 70 meters in length. The iron ribs also indicate that this ship was built sometime in the 1800s, when iron ribs had replaced wooden ones. Archaeology is a lot like detective work, gathering clues into a body of supporting evidence until there is enough to draw a conclusion. Here's another clue. This is a donkey boiler, which was used as an auxiliary boiler on a steamship for driving the winches, the windlass, and other onboard machinery. The donkey boiler confirms that this was a steam-driven ship. But if it was a steamship, then there's something missing from the wreck, the ship's engine. It should be here, in the midsection of the ship. It, too, must have been scavenged. The engine would have provided a valuable clue to the ship's identity and to the date when it was built. Here's more evidence of a steamship. Ivan shows Juan one of the ship's main boilers. It lays about 100 meters from the body of the wreck. This is the best clue yet for dating the wreck. It's built of iron, a lag boiler. That means it predates the 1860s when steel was used for steamship boilers. Dave has found a nurse shark resting in a dark corner among the wreckage. Nurse sharks are nocturnal creatures, and this one is unappreciative of the camera and the bright lights. How easily the sea and its creatures claim the wreck as their own. For Chris, the marine biologist, the coral provide a means for determining the approximate date for the wreck. Some coral has a consistent rate of growth. By measuring the growth of coral on the wreck, Chris can determine a rough time frame for the sinking of this ship. His best guess right now is that the ship probably sank 80 to 100 years ago. The Alicante was recorded as sinking in September 1881. The evidence is mounting for an iron-ribbed steamship 
which was built sometime in the late 1840s and early 1850s, and sank sometime between 1870 and 1900. But that could point to any one of a dozen ships wrecked on the Margarita Reef. What the team needs to find is some characteristic which defines a particular type of ship. Juan searches for the bow section. The shape and structure of the bow is often a defining characteristic. This one is a clipper bow. Juan can see the shape and structure of the ship in this bow section alone. This wreck was a fully rigged steamship. So was the Alicante. But the most telling clue is at the end of this long drive shaft. It is a three-blade Archimedean screw propeller. The Alicante was fitted with just such a propeller. This is unique, rare. None have ever been found in the Caribbean until now. This is what shipwreck hunting is all about. This is a very early screw propeller, one of the first. And Juan can't believe it. And it's all here. The drive shaft running through this copper stern tube. That alone goes a long way to defining this ship. A copper stern tube is a diagnostic characteristic of early screw propeller steamships. So was this rudder. It has the shape and configuration of a rudder for a sailing ship, with this exception. It has an inset for the prop. It shows how shipbuilders were adapting sailing ship technology to accommodate steam-driven ships. Without a doubt, this is the Alicante. It was very much like this drawing. 61 meters bowed astern. It was Scottish-built, Spanish-owned. A fully rigged steamship, propeller-driven, one of the first of its kind. A shipwreck distinct and deserving to be an underwater archaeological preserve of Puerto Rico. <laughs>